たせをいたしました。改めまして、ブロックチェーングローバルガバナンスカンファレンス、フィンサムブロックチェーンビジネス。Oh, sorry, a professor in the College of Information Science and Engineering,、uh, Professor Uehara Tetsutaro, is going to be joining remotely. Next、um, is、um, Director of International Digital Strategy and International Policy from Financial Services Agency Japan, Mr. Yuta Takanashi. And next、um, is the Senior Researcher Business Infrastructure ICT Group of the Mitsubishi Research Institute,、uh, Mr. Yuji Kawada, and Project Director Information Service International Dentist LTD, Mr. Ayukio Takagi, and、um, the Project Professor, Graduate School of Media and Governance at Kaigo University,、uh, Professor、uh, Shigeya Suzuki. And the moderator for the session will be. Uh, senior Fellow at、uh, Georgetown University, Deputy Director of、uh, Fintech and Innovation Office, Financial Services a s i a n Japan, and、uh, Yosuke、uh, Ushida. So, Mr. Ushida, over to you. So, please、uh, take over from here. Thank you very much,、um, uh, Mr. Ushida. Thank you very much. I will be serving as the moderator、uh, for this session. My name is Ushida from the FSA. While being at the FSA, I'm currently being a senior fellow of Georgetown University to conduct research on blockchain governance. The purpose of this session is at the FSA, from around 2017, we have been working on international joint research projects. So we want to introduce that project to you. By making use of blockchain, there could be vulnerability and traceability of financial transactions, some challenges, and governance of the economic system. That is the focus in setting up the agenda of this joint research. Now, experts today, we have written three、uh, joint research reports. Why is it called international? At the FSA, we have an international conference body which is called Blockchain Roundtable. So, we have been making use of the outcome of the research as inputs to that academia,、uh, uh, cryptograph cryptography, technology experts, as well as regulators have come together, and we have been obtaining our. Knowledge. So, there have been three reports which have been made public on the website. Very rich reports they are. So, obviously, we will not be able to cover them within just 40 minutes. So, we just、uh, want to introduce the essence of the reports. Some of the difficulties that they have faced could be shared to pique your interest. To allow you to、uh, let you understand that、uh, the FSA is working very hard. Now, from my side, let me introduce the panelists today. Chronologically, the first research is joint research on technical risk in financial transactions using blockchain. So,、uh, this is Mr. Takagi from Dentsu Information Services International Dentsu. And the second one is、uh, protection of privacy of trans financial trans、uh, transactions and traceability. MRI, Mr. Kawada, is going to present. And Professor Uehara、uh, has also contributed. And the last one, this is the latest, which was made public yesterday blockchain governance on the financial system.、Uh, this will be Professor Suzuki,、uh, we, who will be making a presentation. And Mr. Takanashi, one of the panelists, three years ago, from the first start of this international joint research project, he has been involved. So, first of all, I would like to ask Mr. Takanashi to talk about. 
with what kind of awareness this project was launched. Thank you. My name is Takanashi from the FSA. This project of international joint research, all three of them, I have been very deeply involved. We initially launched this because going forward, the long blockchain or crypto assets or virtual currencies, as they were called back then, as they are going to be used more, when you think about that possibility, unlike before, as we deal with financial institutions, rather than regulating them, technology and engineers and various risks with respect to technology, we need to understand that properly in handling this. That was the awareness that we had. Because we may not know full, fully about technology, how are we going to think about technology? As a roadmap for doing that, we wanted to first of all understand the technology, and we needed to make a contribution internationally. So technology-related research is what we do to make a presentation internationally so that everyone can partake in the discussion. So that is the idea behind this international joint research project. As we started, many things we didn't understand. So we were assisted by many experts in generating the reports in the past three years. So that is the assumption here. Contract research partners, uh, I would like to ask them to um, go over the reports. Thank you. So first presenter will be Mr. Takagi. Thank you very much. Let me share the screen. Is the screen being shown? Yes. Let me start. This is research on technical risk with respect to financial transactions making use of blockchain. My name is Takagi from Information Services International, Dentsu. This research was jointly organized with FSA three years ago. This is the research conducted three years ago in 2017. Let me just give you a background using this uh, introduction page. From back then, public blockchain, virtual currencies, or crypto assets as they are called today, such transactions were being conducted. And in various countries around the world, there are exchanges, exchange operators starting business. So general users were partaking in the transactions of virtual currencies. But on the other hand, with respect to blockchain technology, application of financial transactions is the highly expected one. Various POCs are now being carried out. But blockchain has its vulnerabilities. So research on those matters was lacking, research on security and vulnerabilities. So in this research, we looked at protection of users as well as risks of users. General users are increasing in number greatly. So with respect to transactions using blockchain, what are the vulnerabilities? And what are the countermeasures to those vulnerabilities? That was the focus of our research. Let me go to the executive summary. So that was the background of the research and the outline of the research. There is some overlap. So therefore, I will not cover this because of the overlap. Now, outline of the research, Bitcoin blockchain was the focus of our research. First point. We organized the literature in the academia. People in the academia put together literature. That was what we have covered. Even if it doesn't reach the level of a paper, there is discussion on the community web. We try to put them together. So there's a total of 19 vulnerabilities that we have organized our thoughts around. And we conducted risk assessment by setting certain assumptions. And as a result of risk assessment, high risk, 
And where there are countermeasures being proposed, we conducted demonstration projects. So demonstration projects, this will be covered later on again. Academic research network, be safe network was utilized. And this was a demonstration pro uh, experiment conducted across countries. Let me go to the results of the research. As for risk assessment, there are two axes. When the risk realized, what is the impact on the users is a vertical axis. And when blockchain is looked at as financial system, when there is a vulnerability, what is going to be the impact on Bitcoin? That is the vertical axis. In the end, compromise of um, cryptography could be the largest in terms of risk. Now, what is this cryptographic compromise? Cryptography could be compromised for, from one way or another. That would be the case where the risk would be maximized. So when against this compromise, long-term signature was a technology that was being proposed. So we conducted uh, demonstration experiment. As a result of that, let me explain. In this diagram, these are blocks. Each box is a block on the blockchain. In the black one is the old blocks using old algorithm. The red from here, new algorithm is being used for old blocks having been put together in an archive hash to be connected to the new chain with time stamp and long-term signature to prove that these blocks existed in the past, to operate them with a new algorithm. That is the proposal of the long-term signature. So this was the demonstration experiment to do that from the red box onwards. Hash function and transaction ECDSA, the length of key has been changed and what would be the impact on the data amount was assessed. In this uh, research, these are the impacts that have been found in our research, but obviously these experiments have a number of assumptions. So it's not that uh, this would be the impact in any environment. Uh, this is based on a number of assumptions that we have made. And in conducting this demonstration, BSEF network is an academic Bitcoin network was being used. Keio University, Toho University, and University of British Columbia. So Japan and the U.S. Uh, collaborated in this. So university professors gave us uh, their precious time to conduct this uh, demonstration work together. It was three years ago that we did, but I'd like to take this opportunity to thank those involved in the research. Uh, that concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. There's not a lot of time, but let me ask one or two questions. First, risk assessment, vulnerability to be assessed objectively. This is a quite a landmark uh, analysis results. It was in 2017 or so, three years ago, that you conducted this analysis. Once again, looking at this, including cryptographic uh, compromise, when you are to assess this uh, risk, uh, has there been any change in your assessment of risk? As we announced this, once again, I read this report, and there's something that came to my mind. We did this for a Bitcoin network. But as we finished the report, I think it was around 2018, in Monocoin, block withholdings was a problem that was created. A transaction came into a block, but a miner 
ブロックをこう四つ五つ固め持ってて一気にドンと流して、その長い方の手を持つので、あとはドンと流して、その長い方の手を持つので、あとはドンと流して、その長い方の手を持つので、あとはドンと流して、その長い方の手を持つので、あとはドンと流して、その長い方の手を持つので、あとはドンと流して、その長い方の手を持つので、あとはドンと流して、その長い方の手を持つので、あとはドンと流して、その長い方の手を持つので、あとはドンと流して、その長い方の手を持つので、あとはドンと流して、その長い方の手を持つので、あとはドンと流して、その長い方の手を持つので、あとはドンと流して、その長い方の手を持つので、あとはドンと流して、その長い方の手を持つので、あとはドンと流して、その長い方の手を持つので、あとはドンと流して、その長い方の手を持つので、あとはドンハッシュレートが下がってきたようなハッシュレートがブロックチェーンに関しては、マッピングが一気に増えてくるなというふうに今回のこの研究、当時の研究はこうしたんですけれども、ハッシュレートが下がってきたような、ハッシュレートが下がってきたような、ハッシュレートが下がってきたような。The number of critical assets has increased dramatically, and there are various algorithms being used, and there are different hash rates. So, not just for bitcoins, but for various crypto assets, this could be a p o u n d too. And various attacks that are listed here, and the ones that are discussed today, I don't think there is great change. So, if you have time, please read the full report. Thank you very much. Next, we will have a presentation by Mr. Kawada. Thank you. My name is Kawada from MRI. I'd like to use this presentation material protection of privacy as for the traceability of financial transactions. Using blockchain. This is the report of the research. Background. Back then, CoinCheck as well as Zyphe, these unfortunate incidents took place in 2018. So, crypto asset related uh, uh, problems, there, uh, uh, crimes,、uh, there was a heightened awareness of the risk. If you look at the left hand side of the diagram, crypto asset development community, the technology was making advances. But there are criminal groups in the middle. Anonymization technology was being used to commit crimes. So that was the awareness of the issues. Over the mid to long term, these crimes get more serious. And by expanding of these crimes, safe, sound, trustworthy、uh, crypto assets、uh, could be undermined. That was the concern. So in this project, Together with Professor Uehara of、uh, Wismaker University, as well as、uh, Professor Matsuo of、uh, Georgetown University, various anonymization technology, as well as uh, uh, re recognition、uh, technologies, are being used. To conduct the research, and we did demonstration experiments to come up with countermeasures. Chinto and ETG Lab、uh, gave us a, a lot of、uh, insight. On the right hand side, mixing stealth address. Ring signature, various technologies are mentioned in this list. DeFi had just emerged back then. DEX, decentralized exchange, and secure chat tools that could be used in crimes. We conducted research covering all these technologies. The result of the research, for example, number one, more recently, there was a takeover of Twitter. Bitcoin may show uh, transmission uh, channels, or IP address could be identified, and content、uh, providers' IP address uh, uh, was breached. But you, if you are able to IP address,、uh, uh, you can know who the perpetrator is. And people may think that、uh, it would be sufficient to capture、uh, the contact point between legal tender and crypto assets. But as you see the process on the far right, these measures are not sufficient. I do not have time to go into detail. Now, demonstration experiments, Bitcoin's、uh, test network. Uh, was used to conduct this research. Lightning Network, when this is being used, total transmission channels can be made confidential. 
And to grasp this is uh, very difficult. And uh, mixing sevens on the right, uh, this is something that can be used more or less immediately. And when you use this, then um, if you look at the uh, transfer, the uh, uh, root of the, uh, the cryptocurrency, it's very difficult. So with this uh, in mind, the result of the, the research, and it's unfortunate in one sense, um, identifying a criminal uh, after the fact is quite difficult um, uh, technologically until now. Uh, there's been a number of um, the, 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 the incidences um, where the, the cryptocurrency has um, uh, been stolen and the criminal has not been identified. And um, sometimes um, if you heighten uh, the, the, the regulation, then there is a possibility of the legal um, the acts um, uh, remaining with the, the legal uh, acts um, uh, being reduced. Um, the, um, the minister spoke yesterday, but in this type of situation, the authorities uh, needs to uh, deepen the, the mutual understanding with the stakeholder, and um, it's uh, desirable to engage in uh, creating a relationship or cooperation towards the common goal of expanding the social welfare. This completes my uh, part of presentation. <laughs> Now, I'd like to invite um, a, a professor, um, Uehara, uh, who was the advisor for this project, to comment. So there are various uh, technologies and uh, various um, the, the community. The technology itself is open source, and um, it can be applied to various types of um, data, crypto, anonymous uh, currency. So uh, if you use um, uh, the simple mixing service, the tracking is quite difficult. So for the authorities, and it's somewhat um, a difficult situation. But for users of business, uh, from the perspective of those using the cryptocurrency, um, and there is a risk of it being applied for uh, money laundering. So um, the multi-stakeholder was a suggestion from uh, the Kodasan, but um, uh, Professor Wehara, what can we do going forward? Maybe if I could hear or comment on this point. It's not a simple solution, but um, it was an invaluable opportunity for uh, to partake in this type of experiment. What I was responsible for was particularly related to mixing or um, to see whether we can um, uh, look at IP from address. Now, practically, I have um, some relationship with the police, so the address or IP uh, tracking. I have been asked that many times and um, gave it a, a try and said I couldn't do it. So we have had a number of instances of this type of um, this conversation. It's difficult to start with IP address itself and the blockchain system itself. It's not the case that there is a clear link. So the, um, even if you know the IP address, you can't actually track. So if that's the case, how can we work towards resolving this issue? Well, in the end, blockchain included the, um, the, the crypto asset um, um, the transaction for those people uh, um, who find value uh, in the environment of being able to see it. So it's not a regulation per se, but under certain rules needs to be operated. So the sense of um, rule, I suppose, is what needs to be established. That's my personal view. So in one sense, KYC uh, type of a uh, scheme, um, the, the personal uh, the um, identification scheme. I think this is not something that can be just covered um, based on laws or regulations, but the operation or the operation, um, the, 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 the provider and the businesses, it's important for them to uh, work towards making decisions in that area. And uh, we need to identify common uh, value um, and to work towards that. And I think that does relate to the next uh, presentation um, related to governance. So we can come back to this. But before we go there, Kawada-san. And uh, Takanashi-san uh, from FSA, who was involved, and I'm sure that you were involved in um, uh, the uh, call every day. Now, the, the uh, anonymity uh, technology and um, just doing mapping, um, I'm sure there are a lot of um, uh, difficulties um, in working on this. So if I could hear from both of you some of the things that uh, was quite challenging. 
would like to start? As was introduced with um, the Kano-san, I used to work with him, and uh, we used to talk um, over telephone for about an hour from 8 p.m. every day. So what will we do next, or we should do such this and that. So we have this type of conversation on a daily basis. So we were able to communicate with each other very closely in that respect. And the difficulties in mapping is, of course, uh, quite tough. But what was the meaning of this um, research? This was also difficult to explain. When we talk about talk with authorities of other countries, people say that the, the crypto assets are still very small in scale. Uh, there are other things that are more important. Um, that's what they used to say. And money in laundering is not just uh, limited to the, the crypto assets. That's what all people used to say. But if we look at the situation right now, I think we're starting to see the tide change because under COVID-19 situation, um, we have um, ransomware and things like that targeting hospitals. We are seeing this type of situation. And um, even after a ransom has been paid, you can't track the, the criminal. And within the international uh, regulators, um, people have started to identify this as being a real issue. And I'm kind of saying, you know, I told you so. But anyway, when we explain about the research um, that we have done, they are quite um, get uh, surprised. So there was a not easy uh, the research, but it's a good thing that we've done this. From me, in doing the research, um, we have received a lot of advice and instruction from uh, Takanashi-san. But um, gathering information was very difficult, particularly when it comes to crypto asset. And uh, it was uh, when the wind came in, and also the implementation level, what's the, the situation? And back then, um, the DeFi DEX side was quite difficult. And uh, white web, it has it been done, you know, the, the implementation level on DEX, um, there were also centralized version as well. And that type of operation, uh, what was the, the situation like? And uh, sometimes you could uh, look at the, the legal currency as well. But I, I thought that I wanted to use the real money and work on it, but it was difficult. So what I want to say is that when we're doing this type of um, the research, I felt that there were limitations. And um, the technology for tracking itself uh, is somewhat questionable because uh, many of the, the private sector companies have tried to create business out of that, so the detailed information was not uh, obtained. So can understand how stick is used, but um, to what extent it's been used, and uh, that was quite difficult to ascertain. For this reason, uh, this uh, research uh, was a lot of fun personally, but but uh, there is a the the, uh, the, the information block, um, and it wasn't uh, proportional. And last, the dual use of technology can use for good purpose or bad purpose. And uh, how can we control that? And this was something that I've always been on my mind as I've um, engaged in some research, that's all. And uh, last time I research is uh, from um, the Professor Suzuki, uh, talking about the privacy protection and also traceability, trying to achieve the balance. And um, the, the, the cryptographic technology, and how should that be determined by community and so forth, I'm sure there are various challenges. And maybe you could uh, talk about the research related into this aspect. My name is Suzuki from the KO University. Last fiscal year, in fiscal 2019, we have uh, worked on this research related to the governance of financial system that uses data blockchain technology. So what we have uh, talked about so far was very much a technology based. Myself, um, I'm a software technology uh, the type of person, but this time we looked at governance. And governance is uh, not a, a, a wet uh, issue, um, uh, which is uh, based on people. We try to somehow put that together. Now, what is governance? It may be difficult to understand, but um, I have um, a, a executive summary here. I only have five pages in total, but the objective is um, from the, the experience of multi-hole uh, uh, governance that has been formed um, in the internet today, we wanted to apply uh, this towards the realization of decentralized um, financial system. I'm sure you are using the internet quite freely. And 
and the uh, Dr. Murai Jen was the leader of uh, uh, this uh, research, and um, the Mr. Murai, I've worked with him uh, for the last 30 years, and uh, over that period, the uh, Internet uh, continued to expand gradually. And initially for us, we felt that we didn't think that um, this could be used for business uh, to this scale. This was back in 1990, but 1995 or so, uh, we saw the dot-com um, bubble, and we saw the Windows uh, 95, and so it started to be used in various ways. I initially, it was something where the various network uh, were linked uh, for usage, but um, it started to be used um, by uh, on a global basis, and it has changed into communication media. The fact that it changed into communication media, something that could be managed uh, at a national level, now had to be managed at the global level. One of that is the domain name. For example, um, and what we uh, speak about uh, on the, the, the report, mbb.com and um, dot .com, the two domain names, uh, mtb is uh, the, the music video uh, company, and the other, the, the Madonna. So, Others um, ended up capturing these domains that caused uh, um, uh, uh, this benefit. And this type of thing started to occur as we see internet expand. And we needed to create a, a mechanism to resolve this. And so um, the multi-stakeholder governance methodology started to be utilized. And it started to be utilized to resolve these issues. That was the background in one sense. So, that was the start, but the um, multi-stakeholder governance, even if we say we'll try to resolve things by doing this, it's very difficult still the same because everyone comes together in a flat situation and um, they continue to have discussion uh, until uh, something is um, formed. Uh, that is what is done. So how can we create a kind of mechanism to allow that? And in what way uh, did this become useful on the internet? So we looked at uh, these uh, in quite detail, and that um, is the first point um, uh, in the second part of the slide, um, the uh, research and analysis of multi governance in the internet. So we looked at the history as to how this was established. We did interviews, and, and the multi-stakeholder community that exists today, how are they being operated? So we researched that and we try to create a model out of those. And the second point is um, how to they design the multi-stakeholder governance for the decentralized financial system. Oh, now, what do we need to be mindful of if we have to uh, apply this to the, the decentralized financial system? So we had some discussion on that. The last is an uh, implementation of the multi-stakeholder meeting. This was one of the issues we tried to address. Now, b 2 dc was something that we needed to do. And we were to do this um, in um, the March, um, but then we were able to do so. So we could just see that we could not uh, do it on this occasion. So it's not included as part of the executive summary on this occasion. But if we try to explain, uh, uh, and I would like to mention uh, some of the, the key points here. The first point is that um, we need to uh, the, take into consideration our diversity and needs to be inclusive and transparent. And uh, we, the, we need to be mindful of the importance uh, between the relationship of um, balance of influence, balance of the single vote for each state. And uh, we need to ask uh, the opinions from the communities and we need to create a system uh, that is how comprehensive to continuously improve in accordance with severe and feedback. Now, there is a group called ICANN and um, they do a multi-state governance regarding a domain name and um, uh, the initial uh, the idea uh, related to this were written in the white paper but uh, t t realizing this and to create consensus and to create a kind of bylaw it took 20 years to get there and so it is quite a, a difficult thing in, in that sense. It may look quite simple, but it was extremely difficult. And uh, uh, this was uh, the opinions expressed by those who we have interviewed. These are the things that we need to think about. To realize this, what kind of structure do we need? We have put together a model. This is how it is framed. In the previous slide, the components in the previous slide, can you go back one page? To realize these components, what are the functions needed that is shown in this diagram? 
So there is this discussion of how they should operate. And for DeFi, how this could be realized? Right now, the situation, the state of DeFi today must be checked and confirmed. And in applying multi-stakeholder governance, what are the things that we have to be mindful of? First, because this is a trustless state, so you need to identify parties to have discussion between parties and what is useful is acceleration of technical development, trust and fairness. In these three points, multi-stakeholder governance would be useful. And as I said about the internet, international approach and global approach Discussion between countries and discussion on a global scale. There are different approaches between them. We need to, we tend to mix them together, but there are differences. So we have to understand the differences. And this is going to be the last slide. Our view is that possibly in the future, when DeFi is broadly used, it has to be 24 by 7. Troubleshooting must take place 24 by 7. So peaceful time, normal times, and contingency time, uh, systems have to be created separately. And polycentric, trustless, and diversity. For these notions, you need to have deep understanding of these notions and to have deep discussion about them. We have to know deeply about DeFi and by applying new methods through engineering, we could make a contribution to stabilization of finance. This is an optimistic, bright outlook. So there is this great opportunity. I would like to urge engineers to work on this. Relativity, diversity, and continuity are important. This is a 130-page report. I would like to ask you to take a look at your leisure. And that uh, concludes my presentation. Thank you. Just one question. People who are looking at this, people who are thinking about a business application, engineers and regulators, taking part in this was discussed, but people in business, users, as they listen to this, they don't get to the point of invo being involved uh, at their initiative. What uh, would be the first step to be made? Business opportunities could be found anywhere. If it is good for business and if it is fair for everyone, this could be a place to find that. So coming to this place of discussion, regulators and engineers coming together, we can have a lot of discussion. And in a similar fashion, business-oriented people with a perspective of how they can do business in this area, people should come closer together to engage in new discussion. So multi-stakeholder governance, uh, discussion body would be very important in that regard. Let me give you some specific examples. In the case of the internet, peer to peer file sharing, Winnie and BitTrend, BitTorrent, crimes using crypto assets are very similar to that. Winnie and BitTorrent, I think there's a decline in the number of people using that. What happened as a result is Apple has iTunes. Netflix, cheap, safe, secure, compliant alternatives have come out, which is legal. Legal options came out, and by business offering, businesses offering such alternatives, general users are not using file sharing anymore. So what users want, but because that is not being offered, illegal methods are being used. So if businesses can fill that gap, 
こう合法的な選択肢が得られるというような。Legal options could be obtained by users. That will become very important. So it's not just with technology, you're forcibly resolving problems. If smart options could be offered to general users, that would be very good. Thank you. I would like to urge everyone to take interest in this because we are trying to create an optimal blockchain platform. Please take part. So, this is the end. On the screen, there are three reports on this page. So, if you look at this、uh, page on the screen and access this page later on at your leisure, so we intend to、uh, research this or identity as part of this type of our joint research、um, introduction and、uh, the international joint research going forward. And I would like to ask um, um,、uh, the, for thanks to be、uh, provided to the five panelists.、Um, and、um, I hope that、uh, you'll continue to participate in the forum. Thank you very much,、um, the, uh, Mr. Ushida. Please, uh, please uh, give a big round of applause、uh, for all of the, the panelists. So, with this,、uh, I would like to conclude uh, this um, uh, session. Uh, on international joint research introduction. And the、uh, next session、uh, from 20 past three in Hall A, there will be a、uh, talk session、uh, Use of Blockchain for Global Insurance、uh, Business. And in Hall B here, we'll have a, a panel se discussion session Talent Development for Sustainable Community Growth in Blockchain. オンライン視聴の皆様方、えどうぞご視聴いただくセッション会場の URL をご選択いただいた上で、えー、ご視聴の方よろしくお願い申し上げます。えでは続いてのセッション15時20分の開始の時間まで今しばらくお待ちください。